Inside Xbox traveled to Treyarch Studios' home to the paranormal nexus linked to the unexplained influx of Nazi zombies on Xbox Live. There we talked to the developers about what's new in Backpack 3's Nazi zombie map Doris and also what it's like to work on the fan favorite game mode. There are a lot of gameplay changes in this one. The core concept is the same because it works and people like it. Um, but we've really gone overboard with this one. For example, we have a new way to uh, move the players around the map. Uh, apart from just running and gunning, obviously, we have teleporters in. Are you adding any new weapons this time around? We have some new weapons in there. We have a Bowie knife, which is killer, uh, literally. And, you know, we actually toyed a lot with the design of the Bowie knife because well, we don't want to make an insta-kill weapon because, you know, with a Bowie knife, because then what's insta-kill? You know, you don't get that rush. So we kept it very powerful. When you get this weapon, I mean, for instance, internally, it's the first thing we get because it really changes um, what you're able to do when you get overwhelmed. You're adding a brand new upgrade mechanic as well, right? 16 of the weapons have upgrades now. So basically, the weapon that you've been using all the way through uh, can be completely transformed through a new perk machine that we have, um, a new vending machine that we have rather in the game, which allows you to take that weapon and transform it into something new. Hellhounds were a big hit in Shinanuma. Have you played around at all with the Hellhound rounds? You know, people are going to be expecting Hellhounds, but there's some behavioral changes. <laughs> it's very creepy when you hear a dog, you're like, where the hell is this dog? You're looking around corners, and then suddenly you see the shadow slowly walking around a corner looking for you, and then it runs at you. Very exciting. So that I think actually people will find it exciting again. Next, we track down Brian Tui and Colin Ayers, responsible for all things audio in Nazi Zombies. Well, one of the things that we did was we, uh, we listened to a lot of the feedback about the, the characters that we introduced in Shinonuma. Uh, we we re-recorded new dialogue for these guys, and we tried to really expand on their actual characterizations and their crosstalk, because people loved it when they would actually say things to each other. Ed, punch your head! What about the voice talent guys you used for the Nazi zombie characters? The voice talent we got was top-notch. The guys really, uh, whenever we had our sessions, they seemed to really enjoy the characters, and they even, you know, uh, they were ad-libbing, they were adding their own nuances to these characters and really helped expand them, too. And these, those guys are great. I'm always in a What's the level of production quality like for something like Nazi Zombies in a map pack compared to, say, the core game? We treated the development of DLC pack much the same way as any other production. I mean, it's, you know, there's over 1,200 lines of dialogue uh, in, in the first map, and in and Deris, I think there's 1,400 at this point. Yeah. So even in, even increase. I mean, it's quite a bit for for uh, of dialogue for one map. Um, but you know, it's it's uh, it's been fun. We also chatted with Jimmy Zelinsky, the lead animator and one of the founding fathers of Nazi Zombies. Early on in, in Zombies development, it was a really it was really fun. Uh, working on the anims because it wasn't very pose based. There was not a lot of restrictions on what we can or cannot do. Uh, there wasn't a predefined AI behavior for it. So we really got to, you know, do whatever we wanted. And what, from an animation standpoint, will we see in Doris that we haven't seen before? Uh, as another level of polish is that now you will see uh, the legless zombies, the crawlers. They're actually now tearing the boards um, up in your face. So they're actually leaping up and grabbing a specific board. You have an opportunity to shoot them as they kind of pull the board down. Um, it can be really kind of unsettling when you see a board getting torn off and all of a sudden you see there's a zombie there but then he's not there anymore. So it gives this real like, was he there? And then if you go over there, he jumps up again and it's pretty surprising. Finally, we return to Adam for one last question. What's it like for you guys? What's special about working on post-release game add-ons rather than the full game? It's so much fun, obviously, to create a game that we're very proud of, but also to be able to directly respond to the people who buy the game. I know we keep mentioning that over and over again, but it feels great as a developer to put something out there that you know someone's going to pick it up and go, hey, I wanted that, and it's in the game. It feels wonderful to do that. <laughs>